The best thing that I can remember about Howard is the people at Howard. This is not just a school to us, it's not just the building. The School of Communications is more like a home. The environment really helped me to develop personally and to, to further define who I am. I came out of that school thinking I could do anything and everything. We have to send them out of here with the idea that no matter what happens, I can find a way. I think there's just no end in sight to the kinds of contributions that our young people who live here are going to be able to make. Communications is one of the fastest growing fields out there. It is, it is a field that is continually changing. The equipment we use is changing. The way we communicate with each other is changing. The way people consume media is changing. You have to be trained on equipment that puts you in a position that you can foster your skills so you can be a long-term player in this industry. A Center for Communications Excellence means that you are doing the things that allow you to have your students and faculty rise as high as their abilities and talents and skills will take them to make a meaningful contribution in some way. If you come to Howard with the mindset that I'm going to meet great people and I'm going to do great things, then that's exactly what's going to happen for you. When we talk about leadership for a global society, it is that. You know, right here on this campus, there, there are people from all over the world. When I came in 81, my office for the first couple of years was in a trailer that was up near the football field. Our classes were in various places, so you were running all over the campus. The university said, we've got to get the School of Communications that's all over the campus into one facility. And so what they did was put us down in the C.B. Powell building, which was condemned in 1972, and it was being renovated now for us to use. We still are in a headquarters that are not state-of-the-art by any stretch of the imagination. This was originally a hospital, not a telecommunications complex. It wasn't built for that reason. It's very historic. However, it doesn't support the type of software we need, especially with communications, which is evolving every single day. And despite this, despite this, our students have been able to find ways to make certain that they're learning and growing. Yeah, you are now listening to Howard University's own HBC. It was good, Howard University. You know who it is, your boy, Showtime. Every class I took, I was enthralled by what I learned because it wasn't just about the field. It wasn't just about the writing. It was about the accomplishments in those areas that African Americans have made. See, we were being taught about our history. Many of us had absolutely no idea who Oscar Michu was or who John H. Johnson was. And they weren't just important to African American history, they were important to this country. He was born in Arkansas City, Arkansas. Very, very poor. His mother was a housekeeper. His father was killed in a sawmill accident in Arkansas. And his mother, Gertrude Johnson Williams, really believed in my father and in her son. And she always wanted the best for him. Being in Arkansas, very limited funds, very limited schooling, so much so that he had to repeat the eighth grade so that she could save up enough money to put him on a train and move to Chicago where he could get a better education. I think he's just proven that it doesn't matter where you came from, it doesn't matter how little or how much you have, if you have a vision, if you have the will to succeed, if you have the determination, you can achieve anything. He looked at Life magazine and said, I can do that. I want to start a magazine. I want to start a magazine for African Americans in a time when nobody did. Absolutely not. He went to his mother and he asked to borrow $500 from her. And she thought about it, prayed on it for about a week, and she said yes. 
because she believed in him that much and so she mortgaged her furniture for $500 and that is actually how he got started, how he funded Johnson Publishing Company. Uh, it's a great deal of faith and um, entrepreneurship. That was, uh, what, 70 years ago, but there are comparable things happening today in society where you need to have courage and where you need to have an understanding of maybe I should make a contribution that takes me beyond me and my things. He visited the White House under every president since Eisenhower. He was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Clinton. So he reached a tremendous height and level of respect um, amongst not only just his peers, but amongst the, the really the global community. All through hard work and perseverance and never taking no for an answer. Anyone who's in any position in the media and entertainment industry who's a person of color has to thank him for paving the way. I'm definitely inspired and I feel that because of what he's done and other pioneers in the field that I could definitely do well myself. We have an advantage at our university when we talk about this entrepreneurialism because I think that once a student chooses to come here, they've already said to the world, I've got some of that in me. Once we get this new facility, just envision what can happen in an atmosphere where they can in fact just grow by leaps and bounds because of what is available to them that isn't available right now. Which one did you point to? All right, good job. There are four distinct majors here in the School of Communications. Uh, we need state-of-the-art technology from smart rooms to studios that actually suffice our need to produce television, make presentations, edit videos, journalism. We definitely need a lot of help here. If you talk to people who run news organizations right now, they need people who can do things very, very quickly. We need places where we can teach speed, give students opportunities to practice things in real time, and that means you've got to have classrooms with the right technology. It's very likely that that next big thing in African American media will come out of Howard University. So I challenge current students to think about that. What else can we create that will change the face of, of media, not just in this country, but globally? I want to actually go into politics and business and affect change within my community and the nation, the world. So the Hilltop, that's the Howard paper? I guarantee you, in not only this field, but any other field out there who has a dream, they're not going to let anybody hold them back. They move forward. And if you have that persistence to succeed, no matter what your background is, no matter where you came from, and no matter what people have to say about you, you can succeed. You can't attain great things unless you're willing to take great risk. And it's not all about a roll of the dice. It's not a gamble. It's you prepare yourself, and you work hard, and you make the odds in your favor. And I think that's the lesson of John H. Johnson. John Johnson could do it back in the 1940s when all the odds were against him. Just think about how much more you can do and think about how much more Howard can do if they're able to build a state-of-the-art communications school. I think if my father were here today, he would say that communications now has become such a global entity that it is imperative that African Americans understand the world at large and their place in the world at large and that they have a very fundamental and sound education. My dream would be that the school would just take off to be able to send out more engaged, involved, courageous, good people who are great at the craft and the art of what they do in the profession and who are willing to step out and make a difference in some ways that will help our society be better and stronger. That would be my dream.